This production of As You Like It is set in a, a version of Versailles, our inspiration at least for the entire world. Working with Simon Phillips as a designer, he generally comes to a production with a very strong vision of what he wants to achieve. When I was like thinking about how to how to stage this this play and, and what to do, I thought I want the court to be as strongly a court as a court has ever been. We worked for a really long time, probably six months maybe, and on multiple different designs. We had a, several different concepts in play for quite a while, um, seeing what worked and what didn't work. Simon always knew that he wanted the court world to be black and gold, and he wanted the forest world to be white and white and gold and green. So that was really our starting point for this entire process. and. Everything else was kind of an experiment until we found the right kind of chemical makeup. As associate costume designer, I'm pretty much an extra set of eyes and ears and hands for the costume designer. The costume manufacturer process begins with the renderings that we have received from Alicia. So we'll have all the beautiful drawings of all the characters for the show. We'll have that pinned on the board and then what we'll do as the cutters in the room and I, we will actually heavily research the period. So we wanna make sure that we're cutting the right shapes for the period of time that we're working in, which is late 17th century. In that process, it can be a lot of fabric sourcing and fabric buying, but then also kind of figuring out some little tricks of kind of where are we gonna get this hosiery or where are we gonna get these shirts so once we've researched the period, we'll have to decide um, how we're going to cut those clothes according to the measurements of the actors that we've got. So from those designs, we'll have a complete breakdown of all the individual garments for each character. And then we'll start putting pencil to paper and start drafting our initial patterns. Once the patterns are drawn, we will first of all cut the clothes into calico and make what is called a toile, a sample garment in a blank fabric that we will initially do the first fitting with the actor in. We'll do the fitting and then mark all our alterations onto the paper patterns. And then when we're comfortable with that is when we'll actually start cutting into the good cloth. After the costumes are complete, we normally do send then the finished garment into art finishing, which is a separate department where we've got uh, a huge table laid out. Uh, we've got cabinets full of paints and dyes and we have staff that are able to hand paint, stencil, airbrush, break down the clothes that are required. Millinery is such an important, I mean, it's an integral aspect of any period production. I think in all of these costumes that when you see the hats, they actually finish the outfits. They're these beautifully constructed architectural pieces that give an actor so much presence and, and style. There's all this formality that goes into wearing a hat that I think really informs the actor's physicality um, and, and the way they, even the way they speak, the way they gesture on stage. Probably the best example of that is Touchstone's hat. His big, tall, conical hat, which we really wanted Touchstone to be as long and thin as possible and we already have Dan Fredrickson who's six foot four or something wonderful as, as a starting point uh, and then Philip our milliner who is a genius uh, created this extraordinary hat that also has these huge long feathers that come out the top and I mean, he looks about eight feet tall in it it's fabulous. For some of the fabrics that we use you might find this unusual but we tend to use a lot of upholstery, for example, especially with the brocade frock coats. And the reason we use upholstery fabric is because normally the patterns available in that sort of fabric seem to be larger and more over the top. And for all the embellishments uh, to finish off the costumes, we're using tons and tons and tons of metal buttons. We're using meters and meters of intricate braids. We're using, you know, buckles and fastenings, leather plaited thonging, eyelets, yeah, everything pretty much but the kitchen sink. 
So Duke Frederick is a great example of, of the world that we've made, really, because he is the ruler of this world. So his costume has to tell us everything about the type of court that he runs. And by contrast, his brother, Duke Senior, played by the same actor, played by Shivantha, has to completely contrast the character that we've just created in Act One. So it's a, it's a really great example of a, a kind of summary of the whole show, really. All his fabrics have like real metallic threads woven through them, so there's weight to everything. His entire silhouette is constructed, you know, you, you kind of almost can't see Shivantha in it because every garment is worn like armour. I was just laughing when I was trying my costumes for the first time on, because uh, at one point I played bass guitar and I'm wearing Duke Senior's outfits and I was like, I, I guarantee you that I, if I stand at the weighing scale, I'll be 10 kilos heavier with everything I've got on, at least. I've got boots that come up to here, I have high heels for one character, I have four layers. I've got tights, I've got pants, I have uh, a shirt, I have an over kind of jacket and then I have a big jacket, I have like a cravat sort of thing, I have a huge wig, I have wigs for every character. So there's a lot that I have to shift very quickly. While you're changing, while you're, you're just in that frantic rush, that once you have that last bit, you just have to go. Whew. I am Frederick.